Good Day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast ceremony to commemorate the victims of the genocide against Armenians under the auspices of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia, Montevideo, Uruguay, Sons of Western Armenia, Armena Kufanian. On the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, the U.S. Ambassador to the OSCO called on Baku to ensure free movement along the Berzo Road. The barbaric regime of Baku in the hybrid war against Armenia drove attention to the problem of toponyms Vartan Voskanyan, Red Cross representatives visit to Armenian soldiers held in Azerbaijan, foreign literature confirming the Armenian identity of Dadi Bank Artsaldio says. The descendants of survivors of the genocide against Armenians currently living in the Uruguay number between 15,000 and 20,000, most of whom live in the capital Montevideo and whose ancestors came from Cilicia, Marash, Ain Tab, Yozgat, Urfa, Mardin and Tigran Agert, among other places. In addition, there is the immigration of Armenians from the Socialist Republic of Armenia and since the end of the 20th century from the Armenia that came into being in 1991, Uruguay's Armenian community also quite quantitatively smaller than those settled in countries such as Argentina and United States, France and Lebanon, has generated a high-quality interrelationship with the Uruguayan people in terms of social, economic and political influence. Uruguay's Armenian communities organized into institutions defined by regional, political and cultural affiliations. To commemorate the victims of the genocide against Armenians on April 24, 2023, a ceremony was held in Montevideo on behalf of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia. The Honorary Consul of the Republic of Western Armenia, Montevideo, Mr. Pablo Talanyan, laid the race in the capital's most important square, the Plaza Independencia, at the foot of the monument to the main hero, General Jose Artigas. Hero of Artsakh Armena Kurfanyan was born on January 28, 1919, Yerevan. In 1992, Armena Kurfanyan moved to Russia with his family. After returning from Russia, Armena Kurfanyan entered the Military Institute of the Minister of Defense of the Republic of Armenia. After completing his training, he attained the rank of lieutenant. At the age of 26, he received the military rank of captain and was appointed a company commander on the front line. Since the first days of the Four Day War, which began in April 2016, he has been on the front line of Artsakh. Urfanyan, together with the personnel of the 1st Rifle Company operating under his command, led a long battle against the enemy who made a surprise attack. Having sent the crew back, Captain Urfanyan continued the battle alone, hitting one tank and about a dozen enemy soldiers during this time. In order to avoid capture by the enemy, he sacrificed himself by detonating a grenade, inflicting significant casualties on the enemy in the process. In the early 17th century, the Nakhijevan region was one of the most ethnically homogeneous regions of Armenia, with the majority of its population being Armenians. The 17th century European traveling missionary Vilot provided remarkable information about the above mentioned. However, the Turkish Iranian wars of the 17th century had disastrous consequences for the Armenians in the region. In 1603, Shah Abbas I of Iran began his invasion. The region of Armenia from the eastern borders of Nakhijevan to Shirak turned into a battlefield. According to the religious traveler Antony Gueva, the Armenian population was predominantly Armenian in these areas, and more than 20 cities and thousands of villages were subjected to warfare during the military operation, Shah Abbas having come to the serious conclusions that the quantitative relationship of forces was not his favor and that it will be impossible to resist the Turks in an open war, decided to devastate and evacuate his cities and villages of Nakhijevan, which were in the path of the advancing Turkish army, and retreated. Thus, in 1965, the city of Jura was almost completely evacuated. In 1812, the British diplomat William Susley, during his visit to Jura, noted the following, I have examined the ruins of Jura. The entire population consists of only 45 Armenian families, but the large cemetery testifies to the number of past inhabitants. It is situated on the slope of a mountain descends to river with numerous tombstones densely planted like a military company. This is the result of centuries, the memory of many generations. Generations. Washington called on Baku authorities to ensure the free movement of goods and people along the Berzo Road. This was stated by U.S. Ambassador to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, Michael Karpetner, addressing Azerbaijani Foreign Minister Jehun Bayramov at a meeting of the Permanent Council of the Organization. According to him, the United States is deeply convinced that the only way forward is peace, dialogue and settlement of relations between Azerbaijan and Armenia based on mutual respect for each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. 
integrity. He called on the both sides to refrain from provocative, threatening or hostile actions or rhetoric. As a starting point for improving security, we call on back authorities to take steps to ensure the constant supply of gas and electricity to Artsakh, as well as the free flow and movement of goods and people, including through the Berzor Road. In this regard, I urge Baku authorities to remain faithful to the letter and spirit of the February 22 decision of the International Court of Justice of the United States, the U.S. Ambassador said. According to him, the United States will continue to work with Baku authorities and Armenia at the bilateral and multilateral levels, as well as through partners such as the European Union and international organizations to achieve a stable and dignified peace. Referring to the decision of the Hague Tribunal, the government of Western Armenia wishes to emphasize that our government does not accept all decisions where the indigenous people of Artsakh are perceived as an Armenian community or a national minority. It is time to understand that we are not fighting against the violation of the rights of a religious community or a national minority, but against the rights of an indigenous people who are part of Western Armenia and of genocide perpetrated in their own homeland, whose neglect will endanger the lives of all. For this reason, we wish to remind our American colleagues that the indigenous people of Artsakh own their land and manage their own future. There can be no doubt that the Baku barbarian regime pays serious attention to the problem of toponyms in its hybrid war against Armenia, writes Iranian expert Vartan Voskanyan. This toponymic war is aimed at questioning the historical and political legitimacy of the sovereign disposition of our state and nation, without exception of the entire territory of our motherland, thus preparing the ground for the justification of barbaric expansionism against Armenia under the cover of an absolutely unknown and fictitious Western Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. One of the most vivid examples in the attached screenshot below is the reference of one of the Baku aged prop resources to one of my posts in the social network Facebook. Presenting the content of this post in translational toponyms of the sovereign territory of Armenia mentioned by me are distorted without exception, right up to the fact that Yeras became some barbarian Arasdayan, Zangakatun became some Chanakchi, and so on. This clearly proves that the Baku barbarian regime gave a direct order to all the units of its aged prop to act in concert on the front of the anti-Armenian toponymic war, so once again we need to discard illusions and strike disproportionate blows the enemy. The government of Western Armenia, referring to the record of the Iranian East Mr. Vartan Voskanya, reminds us that the Baku authorities insolently continue to implement the thesis they have voiced, renaming Armenian toponyms with the toponyms indicated on Soviet maps, trying to prove that the territories belong to the Baku authorities. Baku is following Ankara's example, we think that the fight should be conducted both in the information and political fields, as it is done in Western Armenia. From the UN and other platforms, we will not stop repeating about the indigenous peoples and violations of their rights. Toponyms are one of the points determining the biological age, culture, and genetics of a nation living in the given territory. We hope that from now on, our respected colleagues, scientists will concentrate on a deeper illumination and substantiation of these problems, and we will gladly use their scientific substantiations. The International Committee of the Red Cross representatives on 7 June visited the two Armenian soldiers who were abducted by Azerbaijani in the territory of Armenia and are being killed in Azerbaijan. Zara Amatuni, the Communication and Prevention Program Manager of the ICRC Armenia Office, informed Armenian News Sayem about this. Private conversations were held with them and contact with their families was established through letters, Amatuni added. On May 26, the Minister of Defense of Armenia officially announced that since 7 p.m. the contact with the Armenian to servicemen who was supplying food to combat positions was interrupted. Armenia has petitioned to the Strasbourg court with a request to apply an interim measure against Azerbaijan due to the latter's abduction of these two soldiers. The inscriptions preserved on the vaults of the Dadivank Monastery and the monuments of ancient Khachkars around the monastery prove that this building is very old and belonged to Armenians. The Diocese of Artsakh of the Armenian Apostolic Church wrote about this. Historical information and testimonies about the construction of the monastery are found in various foreign literature and professional works. In the Orthodox Encyclopedia, published under the patronage and editorship of Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and All Russia, information was presented about the 
the construction of Dadivang, the origin of its name, the Armenian holy place, which over the centuries suffered attacks and destruction and survived. The work presents in detail the historical facts and descriptions of the buildings of the monastery complex. In 2014, through the joint efforts of architect Ara Zarian and restorer Christine Lamuro from Italy, the restoration process of Dadivang's mural began, which continued until 2017. The expert presented the details of their work in a book titled Conservation Restoration of the 1297 Frescoes of the Catholic Church Built in 1214. The book begins with the history and description of Dadivang and continues with the results and findings of the work carried out by the experts. As a result of the extensive work of the experts, the historical appearance of the frescoes in the Holy Catholic Church and the exact date of the frescoes were finally determined in 1297. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Oh, yeah. 